Hi, my name is uh, Bramley Lingdo. I'm from Shillong, Meghalaya. I belong to the Kasi tribe from the state of Meghalaya. I'm also the founder and CEO of Worldview Impact Foundation, and we are working to restore our forest ecosystems and rivers and mountains here in Northeast India, and also working on regenerative farming to help farmers, uh, indigenous people, to help restore land and fight climate change. The topic that I want to talk to you about today is about team building uh, in organizations and in projects that uh, you guys might be involved in working. And I believe that every organization and every leader needs to know how to build a team, a credible team to execute any project or any mission. No man is an island. And therefore, every man or every woman needs a team who he can trust and execute the mission by delegating authority on the ground. So before you select the team, you have to be clear that your team is qualified and understand the same mission that you believe uh, you want to achieve over a particular timeline and a goal. So you have to be very clear when you select the team with a clear criteria and a clear timeline and clear goals. Once you have selected your team, you need to know their own individual and personal mission so they are aligned with yours so that you can mitigate any conflict or any um, confrontational visions that will not be aligned with yours. How you achieve this is by organizing um, a kind of events, workshops, or seminars, be it on Zoom, because right now we have COVID-19, we can't meet in person. You can use Skype or Zoom or Google Meetup to get to know each person before you put them together in a team of what their aspirations, of what their goals are, and make sure they align with yours, sharing, uh, good communication between you and your team member. And once you have clarity and confidence that that person that you want to bring on board your team is totally aligned with your vision and believes in your uh, long-term uh, uh, strategy, you bring them on board and you ask them what they would bring to the table, what additional value they would bring to your project, and then you give them a terms of, uh, of operations or terms of uh, agreement for them to operate uh, with, uh, with minimal supervision from your side because you don't want to micromanage uh, a person that you've selected once you have uh, given them a mandate to execute uh, your project. For example, if you're sitting in Delhi and you're working in um, all the eight northeastern states in northeast India, there's no way you're gonna call them and micromanage them every day, uh, especially if they're thousands of miles away from you and you can't be with them physically as we are right now in COVID-19. You need to give them a full training, a full briefing before you bring them on board as you build your credible team on the ground. So imagine you are the, uh, the admiral sitting on, uh, in, the, in the command of your naval base, um, let's say in Delhi or wherever and you have your captains of every ships that are part of your fleet, of your team. You have to give them very clear instructions of how to correct their course, which direction they should go, at what speed, at what knots. Uh, if they're ex expecting any bad weather, how to navigate through the waves or through the storms, through those ships. The captains of your ships are not going to sink and you have to give them credible maps so they can navigate and make sure they don't go into enemy territory and don't get shut down. I'm just giving you a hypothetical uh, commander approach of a military as he builds his steam and the chain of command of how it works on the ground. This can also be applied into your projects, especially if you're far away from each other, but you have entrusted uh, this particular uh, mandate to your team and you know exactly what they should do when they have any challenges, any problems when executing the projects. There's a checkbook of details, like a textbook approach for them based on the training you've given them. So you can allow them to uh, be self-starters like most entrepreneurs are on the ground, 
to be able to um, mitigate any risks that they may face while executing their project in their own states and then report back to you on a, you know, on a weekly basis, depending on how good the connectivity is, the internet is, and make sure that there is no uh, lack of communication. So you must make sure that as you build a team, they must also respect your time and vice versa, you respect their time. And whenever you call for meetings, they must be punctual. That is called respect. They must not be late. And if they're going to be late and if there's any internet problem or no connectivity, they should give you advance warning, like a day or two before. Hello, I'm on the field work. I may not get connection. I may have to call you, reschedule the meeting. So that way you know and your time is not wasted waiting for them the whole day and them not logging in. Then you have a communication gap. So that has to be very clear. And then for them to work on the ground, they also should know how exactly to implement those projects. Like when they go to the villages, when they're collecting data, when they're speaking to the stakeholders, uh, it might be difficult to access certain communities. You might be off the grid. So you must know how to instruct them, how they can communicate with those uh, stakeholders in the, in the villages, in the remote communities, how to win the trust, how to build partnerships, how to do monitoring and evaluation of projects so that the, 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 the ground team has the complete trust of the community that they're trying to help or to reach out, whether it's helping in post COVID-19 strategies, whether it's helping with disaster mitigation, whether it's implementing a huge forestry project to plant trees on their land, whether it's helping local farmers uh, plant crops um, in a systematic uh, organic system uh, with agroforestry approaches and so on and so forth. You need to give them clear instructions on the ground because there's another layer of team you're going to be building on the ground. So at the end of the day, you keep building, you keep building trust, you keep learning from each other, you as a team leader and then as your as the bigger operational team on the ground checking back and forth with you they might have challenges and you must make room for them to adjust to keep learning with you and you, you must speak in a in a very clear way so that there is no uh, uh, miscommunication with your team especially when there's uh, language differences time differences stress uh, as we are all facing right now anxiety of what the future is so you must be ready to listen to the needs of your team and be ready to adapt and giving them inspiration and guidance the whole time, especially when they're facing problems. So these are the key issues uh, that every leader or every founder of an organization should be uh, conscious of, of building a strong, credible team. It's uh, trust. Uh, being able to listen, being able to guide, being able to lead with dignity and respect and being able to, uh, you know, cheer them up in difficult times when they're down, when they're low and a good tone of voice. Never shout to your team in public, never ridicule them. And if they make a mistake, have a one-to-one -one with each member of your team and have a face-to-face -face talk via Zoom, obviously, and via Skype and ask them, is there any problem going on? Are you having issues at home? Any personal problems that can be affecting you in your decision-making process? Uh, speak to me, or tell me, how can I correct? Uh, how can I be of your help to you? So, you know, a brotherly approach rather than a top-down authoritarian dictatorship approach. That will break your team. So this is what every leader should do. Uh, to build trust, to build credibility among your team members so they look up to you as your mentor and they grow together as a team. So that is all I have to say to you right now. If you have any further questions, uh, you feel free to get in touch with me. I'll be able to give you more um, uh, you know, guidance. But to, to end, I would like to give you a, a little story, an example of uh, how I led my team uh, back in the summer of 98, I was uh, riding my bicycle with a team of 35 riders from all over the world going from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. Now that's 5,000 kilometers. And I was a team, team rider. 
And my job was to ride in the morning, mark the, the roads and the highways with, my, with the map because we don't have GPS and mobile phone in those days. So I was like the scout riding ahead and making sure the road is clear for my team coming from behind me and then calling the host who will be hosting us that night where we will sleep, where there is enough beds, enough food, the showers. It was my job to make sure that the people who will host my team are ready. And I call my team behind and say, ride safely, there's a storm or there's an accident ahead and so on and so forth. And then obviously riding for nine weeks for 5,000 kilometers, we had accidents along the way. And we had people from my team who were injured. So I had to take care of them, take them to the hospital. And sometimes I had to make the hard decision of sending those riders back home because they've broken their hands, broken their limbs. And for the, for the benefit of the remaining team members, I had to make a tough decision of sending the injured uh, team members back home, those that cannot ride the bicycles anymore. But we finally made it to Washington DC after nine weeks and we were able to raise collectively as a team, half a million dollars, like $500,000. And with that money, we were helping other young people in other developing countries to send them money to their projects. We were accepting project proposals from different countries, from different young people who needed money. And each rider had to vote where and which project they were gonna send their money to. But at the end of the day, we had so many difficulties as we were riding our bicycles across America, but we kept bonding as a team. And we call it the cow, the community on wheels. And this was so important because it was physically, mentally, spiritually challenging. But as a team, we had to bond together to be able to withstand the forces of nature from wind to storm, to snow, to heat, to dust storms. You can imagine riding all across America but we made it, we were all burnt out after 5,000 kilometers, but we made it to Washington DC. Uh, we didn't meet uh, President Bill Clinton, but we met Vice President Al Gore, and he really came to welcome us in the steps of the US Capitol. And then we were able to go and meet different senators and congressmen in the US uh, uh, Capitol and the US Senate to lobby to them to uh, give more money to the US uh, International Agency for Development, USAID, to help finance projects led by young people around the world to fight uh, climate change and help in sustainable development. So this is just one of the examples I wanna share with you so you understand what it takes to build a team and what it takes to be a leader of your team. So thank you very much. This is Bremley Lingdor signing off.